Hello, my name is Eric, and I've been a teacher for about three decades now. I've taught martial arts, I've taught music, and academia. And when I was in school, from high school on down, I was not the exceptional student, which is contrary to my profession of the last three decades. What I want to relay in my story of high school and down of my scholastic uh, progress, if you will, or my scholastic journey from high school on down, is I had a perception of myself in regards to as a student, which was a result of lacking certain skills that made me believe that I wasn't a good student or I wasn't capable of being a good student. I never thought I wasn't smart, but I never saw myself as the kids maybe we associate with doing really well in school, consistently high marks, turning in things, have their stuff more or less together, as we would say. And I know from my teaching experience in multiple disciplines that many students of all ages, from kindergarten all the way to adulthood, um, lack certain skills, not necessarily skills of processing power to understand information, but skills to manage information, bring in information, and how to really absorb it properly. So let me just give you my background when I was very young all the way up through high school and then what I had to do um, to manage these skills or to basically teach myself these skills to eventually get through college. When I was very young, I went to a grammar school and then I transferred to another grammar school of a different demographic. And in this process, I had disconnected because I was more influenced by what was going on from like the social cultural point of view with the students than the academia itself. And I also came from a divorced family. And this isn't to put any blame on my parents or anything like that, because many families these days are divorced. Um, but it did change the dynamics of the time after school coming home that I was out playing with my friends all the time, pretty much up till dark and even through the dark a lot of times, that I didn't establish certain skills to make sure things got done um, from an academic standpoint. And this traversed all the way through junior high and high school. And one of the only reasons why I kept C average in high school was because I was interested in music and I was in the band and I had to maintain that. And all through that time, I really didn't do I hate to say, really any homework. It's ironic now that, you know, the last 10 years, all I do is homework, which is ironic. But what I found in looking back and also looking at current students is that when students are lacking certain skills of how to organize themselves, how to time management, how to write neatly and process information and how to go about teaching themselves or even asking for help, it changes their perception of themselves and what they think they're capable of doing. I can't tell you how many times I've heard, I'm just not a school person. I just can't do school. And particularly now in the modern age where we have very high levels of multiple technology that is very quick in bursts of information, which has shifted attention spans to even shorter, shorter, shorter. It even seems more that this is becoming more, more pertinent that students feel that they may not be academically inclined. And I have found that that's not necessarily the case. I believe most people can learn pretty much anything with the desire and the will. Doesn't mean everybody's gonna be an academic, but this skill sets, which will become later known as executive functions, not only are for the student, but they're also for life in general. Um, as we get older and we have to manage work, we have to manage the house, we have to manage our families, manage whatever hobbies we may do, these are all basically executive functions. For my conversation today, I'm mostly focusing on students, um, the executive functions pertaining to students and how they impact it. And, and the, main, the main idea I'm trying to get out in this video is, most parents these days are working, and I'm talking about both sets of parents. And these skills that aren't really brought up in schools very much of how to organize yourself, how to manage 
your time um, when a test is coming or an essay or a project or whatever it may be or even how to sit down and do a math problem when you have no idea or where to go look online. These are all basically the executive functions and most students I have found are falling through the cracks in these. Most schools end up just kind of hammering the academia, you know, pushing either more content down the student's um, throat or just leaving up to the students to figure it out in their own. Now, some students are very capable of doing that. And there's very many parents that can help their children structure themselves to learn this stuff. Or in the case of me, I have a tutoring business that I have made a niche in a niche, excuse me, of executive functions, where in the beginning of our sessions, the first thing we do is check what's coming up um, macroscopically in terms of tests, projects, essays, what's due the next day or the next few days, check the grades, we manage things, what's coming up, and just kind of make a plan so when the time in between our sessions, the student has an idea of how to go about the stuff. And this is not something that happens overnight. This is something that is a, a long, a long game that builds up over time. So the earlier that students tend to uh, learn these things, the better it's going to be for when they finish high school and hopefully go on to college. It took me going through an activity called drum corps after I had finished high school where I really didn't have any of these skills at all. I went and did this activity called drum corps for three years, which was very high level uh, discipline, high level work ethic. And because I wanted to do it, I had the motivation to really push myself beyond my limitations. When I finished this activity at 21, I went to college and initially I did fairly well, which was basically reiterating the G requirements were like the, you know, the last stages, I should say the next stages after high school. But the minute I started hitting my major requirements, even on the lower division side, my executive function started really, the lack of them started showing up immensely. And I had a, and I was starting to squirm. I didn't really know what was going on because I felt like I knew the material, but when I would perform on tests, it wasn't showing up at all. And it would cause a lot of anxiety, a lot of self-doubt and depression because I didn't think I could do it. Yet in the back of my head, I knew I could. And it was pretty much that way all through college up until even the last minute. But what I learned to do over time in college was how to prepare myself to do college well, how to prepare myself for classes, let it be reviewing the material before the lecture, because I was a physics major. And I'll be honest with you, most of the time I had no idea what the professors were talking about. And we kind of assumed that in college, the professors are going to be great teachers. And on the contrary, that's not necessarily the case. A lot of times professors, because they're research professors, are so enthralled with what they're researching, they may not be the best person to teach the material, particularly if it's a lower division requirement or a lower class. These guys are PhDs and they're teaching undergraduate stuff. They don't know how difficult it is for the student. So I had to teach myself these things. I had to teach myself to sleep well before an exam, to prepare a few days before an exam, if not even a week to stay calm, to review all the homework, to review all the problems I had missed before, to eat before an exam, to how to organize myself properly so I could start to do well on these tests and do well in college um, overall. Over time, the last, particularly the two years of my college, I was honing in on these and, they, and it was starting to pay dividends. And when the last test I took, which was, I believe, an electrodynamics test, I ended up getting like second or third. And it wasn't because I was any smarter or anything like that. It was just because I had learned how to create a vehicle that transported me through college and maximized my skill set. This is the one thing that I wanted to bring up in this short discussion. I was not by any means an exceptional student in high school on down. I wasn't dumb, but I did have a viewpoint that I thought I wasn't a very good student, even though I did like academia. And looking back on it, this was pro the early 70s, mid 70s, probably what we would call the early forms of ADHD. Um, we didn't have the internet and the cell phones, but my generation was the one that came 
that was born off the TV. That we were the t first TV generation, I believe is what they said. And <clears throat> I remember it being very difficult to sit down and get work done, even though I would come home. And I always remembered, it was always in the beginning of the school year or the beginning of a term that I said, okay, this time I'm gonna do well. I'm gonna really stay on top of things. And it wouldn't last more than two or three days at best. And this wasn't to say anything bad about my parents. My parents were divorced. My mom was working all the time. My dad was working and everybody was doing their thing. So I know in today's um, society, this is the case. It's a two uh, income household these days. So when mom and dad come home, they're exhausted to be able to sit down and help their child form, you know, not only get the work done, not just the academic uh, demand, but also are these kids organized? Are they, do they know, are they turning stuff in? I can't tell you how many times backpacks just look like there's a stuff full of papers. And I'll be honest with you, and this isn't, um, this is just from experience. Mostly it's boys than girls. Girls tend to be on average a little bit more mature. And I can't tell you how many clients I've had that they've hadn't really had to do anything with their daughters. The daughters really keep themselves organized. They talk to the teachers. They know when things are coming up. And when they come to me for a tutor, it's really just like a sharpshooter doing the academic stuff on the boys from junior high on, we have to structure and put these things in place, these executive functions, so they can keep track of what's going on in school, besides just learning the academia. So I just wanna leave you with this, that if you know of a student, or maybe you have a child, or a daughter, or a niece, or, an aunt, or a niece, or a nephew, or something, that says they don't like school, or they don't feel that they are good in school, and that they're just not made that way, don't take that at face value. It could be that they just don't have the vehicle that is allowing them to maximize their true potential. Because remember, even after school, even if they decide not to go to college, which I totally uh, do not recommend, um, there is still gonna be managing life, managing time, managing kids, managing family, managing work, managing personal time. These are all basically executive functions. So learning them through uh, academic from kindergarten through high school and hopefully through college and the life, this is something that is gonna be used all the time. And I'm living proof of this. If anything is the one skill I got from college, um, let me just backtrack for a moment here. We, are, as a teacher, I always feel, especially I'm a math guy, so what am I gonna do with this, Eric? How am I gonna use the quadratic formula? How am I gonna do this in my life? Well, I'm living proof of it. The one thing I developed on my own, which is known as executive functions now, is a, a set of procedures that worked for me to graduate college. It is that very set of procedures that I use with my students and structure their daily activities, even in between the se our sessions. And then, of course, the academia is what I learned as well, too. So I'm going to leave you with, if you know of a student, maybe a family member or something like that that isn't doing well in school or feels that they could do better or maybe just says school is not for me. It may be that their executive functions are lacking and it may be something that needs to be looked at. Thank you very much for listening to me.